It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. What is that? What's that sound? For more than three straight months ending this December, this is the true picture of crop fields across several parts of Uganda, which has since set the stage of narrowing food output within the households and markets as well. When the fleets of driverless cars start rolling out, they're expected to decrease road deaths. Humans cause an estimated 94% of road fatalities, and autonomous vehicles will likely lower that rate. There's a catch. About one in five organs used for transplants come from car crash deaths. If self-driving cars mean fewer people die behind the wheel, what does that mean for the organ shortage? This fire is crazy.
The discovery of Russian malware at a Vermont utility company has some worried about the U.S. power grid. The malicious code found on a laptop is linked to Grizzly Step. That's what the Obama administration calls a Russian operation linked with several hacks during the U.S. election. The laptop wasn't connected to any of the grid systems, and the company is working with federal officials to prevent another breach. Attempted hacks on the electric grid are serious, but they're also pretty common. It suffers more cyber attacks than any other piece of American infrastructure. If a hack is successful and the system goes down, it's bad news for U.S. medical, emergency, and utility services. That's why the grid is constantly monitored and protected. In a statement, Vermont's governor said the U.S. government should, quote, put an end to this sort of Russian meddling. The U.S. said this week it will sanction Russia for hacks that it says compromised the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. It also ordered 35 Russian officials to leave the country. The holidays have unleashed a massive swarm of new drones fresh out of the box. Now the government wants to keep track of who's flying them. 15-year-old the Keelan Guard has been practicing with this small drone outside Phoenix. Kind of have to stay on your toes. He got this much bigger one as a gift this holiday season, part of an estimated 1.2 million drones given as gifts, up 112% from 2015. But before drones weighing just over half a pound or more take flight, the owner needs to register with the FAA or face the potential of huge fines, something drone makers won't be required to tell you until at least 2018. The FAA expects as many as 2.5 million drones to be sold this year. So far, more than 615,000 hobbyists have registered. That's part of an effort by regulators to get drone users to follow the rules, including flying below 400 feet and away from airports. Through mid-December, more than 1,800 drones have been spotted around airports, up about 50 percent from 2015. Just this month, an inspector general report criticized the FAA's oversight of drone safety for not being proactive. Do you think the bulk of consumers know they even have to register their drone? Well, the, the, the numbers suggest that no. Michael Droback is a lawyer who works with the drone industry. The registration system with enforcement and penalties, it sounds like the federal government is taking care of us and protecting our skies. The reality is they're not allowing for the kind of commercial operations that we really do want, while at the same time not providing real guidance on how we can be good stewards of this technology. The FAA has focused on educating drone users rather than seeking fines. The agency was not able to tell us what enforcement action it's taken against users who have not registered. Rena, while the FAA can seek civil fines, the much more substantial criminal penalties can only be handled by law enforcement. I have a message for the drug dealers, the gang members, and the criminal cartels terrorizing our cities, our locations, our citizens, your days are numbered. We're getting you out, and we're getting you out fast. We will build a great wall, and we will stop illegal immigration for once and for all. And that was President-elect Trump promising to end illegal immigration. But according to a bombshell New York Times report, the security of America's borders are being compromised by a serious threat from within. According to the report, quote, over the last 10 years, almost 200 employees and contract workers of the Department of Homeland Security have taken nearly $15 million in bribes while being paid to protect the nation's borders and enforce immigration laws. Meanwhile, Bloomberg Politics is now reporting that three Republican senators are working with Democrats to, quote, shield about 750,000 young undocumented immigrants from deportation if Trump cancels a 2012 order from President Barack Obama that let them stay in the U.S. And we begin with the extraordinary exchange between President-elect Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Mr. Trump calling the Russian leader, quote, very smart. Putin surprising the White House, refusing to retaliate for the U.S. expelling 35 Russian operatives, payback for the election-related hacks. Vehicles today seen streaming out of two Russian compounds, federal agents on hand. Putin saying he'll wait for the president-elect to take office before making his next move. ABC's Mary Bruce starts us off in Washington. Russian diplomats tonight are on the move, packing up and shipping out after President Obama shut down two Russian compounds. And the clock is ticking for dozens of diplomats and their families who have until noon on Sunday to get out of the country. Russia sending a plane to pick them up. Have to leave within uh, hours. And uh, 
it's 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 just not not human. And as the parade of moving vans roll out, President-elect Trump is praising Russian President Putin for his restrained response. Trump calling it a great move. I always knew he was very smart. Tonight, some members of Congress blasting Trump for his response. I am scared. I am frankly very, very scared that our next president hasn't a clue about what Russia is actually up to. The Russians had promised to retaliate. The foreign minister this morning calling for a tit-for-tat expulsion of U.S. diplomats from Russia. But then, in stepped President Putin with a shocking 180. There will be no counterpunch. Saying in a statement, we will not create any problems for U.S. diplomats. We will not expel anyone. Instead of an eviction, an invitation. Putin welcoming all children of the U.S. diplomats accredited in Russia to the New Year and Christmas children's show at the Kremlin. Experts say Putin may be playing the long game, hoping a President Trump will be more receptive. That was staged. It was intended to show that Mr. Putin could be magnanimous, that he could be above it all. But again, the goal of that message was not the Obama White House, it's the uh, incoming administration and Mr. Trump. The president-elect, who has repeatedly questioned if Russia was behind the hacking, says it's time for our country to move on to bigger and better things. I think we ought to get on with our lives. I think that computers have complicated lives very greatly. You know there might be some problems when you have even the Rolling Stone questioning the hacking investigation. They've got a great piece out this morning that I recommend everyone read. And here's in part what they say. They say, like the WMD story, there's an element of salesmanship the government is using to push the hacking narrative that should make reporters nervous. They also go on to say that if there was a real smoking gun there, uh, if there were a real smoking gun, they had evidence, then President Obama would actually do something to hit a little bit harder. Sending out 35 of their folks ain't going to do anything. Well, and, you know, there's something that I don't hear reported very often. Uh, everybody's all exercised about the fact that Russia uh, supposedly got involved in our election, even though there's no evidence, none at all, that it had any impact on the election if they hacked into John Podesta's computer because he gave them his password, which wasn't very smart. But here's what I, I want to know. Why haven't we seen the outrage for the U.S. and the Obama administration getting as involved as they were in trying to defeat Benjamin Netanyahu mm. in his re-election in Israel? I mean, they spent all kinds of money. Sure. Some of it was State Department money millions of dollars worth of effort and all the Obama consultants went over there trying to defeat Bibi Netanyahu. Where's the outrage there about us getting involved in Israel's prime minister election? Well, Haven't heard it. Well, you're right. Speaking of outrage as well, the mainstream media, as they've covered this, this process, has called it election hacking. Yesterday, we had three full screens that came out, including from the failing New York Times, that said election hacking from the Russians. So they're conflating this without proof. And that's what this Rolling Stone argument article is saying, is where's the integrity of journalists who traditionally need to see the evidence before they tie these things together. Instead, they're just saying it's election hacking uh, and taking it from the Obama administration. And there's fresh evidence that the bad blood between Washington and Moscow will carry into the new year, this time over allegations that Russian hackers tried to penetrate a computer program linked to Vermont's electrical grid. The electric company found malware on a company laptop yesterday after the Department of Homeland Security shared the malware code with utility, financial, and transportation companies. The laptop wasn't connected to the power grid system. Here's Senator Patrick Leahy's response, quote, state-sponsored Russian hacking is a serious threat and the attempts to penetrate the electric grid through a Vermont utility are the latest example. This is beyond hackers having an electronic joyride. This is now about trying to access utilities to potentially manipulate the grid and shut it down in the middle of winter. As punishment for the hacking scandal, Russian diplomats and their families have one day left in this country before they get the boot. On Friday, nearly three dozen Russian diplomats and their families were preparing to leave the U.S., ordered out after the White House slapped sanctions and other penalties on Moscow. The U.S. also blocked access to two compounds owned by Russia, all in retaliation for alleged Russian interference in the U.S. presidential election. Marching bands from around the country are going to Washington for Donald Trump's inaugural festivities. Forty organizations will be in the parade, 8,000 participants. 
But tonight, a new controversy surrounding those performers. Jan Chamberlain, a four-year member of Utah's Mormon Tabernacle Choir, a state Trump won handily, has written a lengthy public Facebook posting that she is quitting the choir because it agreed to sing for the president-elect. It is with a sad and heavy heart that I submit my resignation to you and to choir. I simply cannot continue with the recent turn of events. I could never look at myself in the mirror again with self-respect. I also know, looking from the outside in, it will appear that choir is endorsing tyranny and fascism by singing for this man. A controversial new law in California is removing all penalties for children soliciting or engaging in prostitution starting January 1st, and it sparked a fierce debate. Opponents of SB 1322 say it's essentially legalizing child prostitution. California Assemblyman Travis Allen said it's opening the door for more child prostitutes and it renders law enforcement powerless to stop the cycle of abuse. But those in favor of the measure say it will cut down on child sex trafficking. They argue children in that situation should be helped rather than punished. If caught, children can be placed into civil protective custody. That way, social services can try to help them get out of the situation that got them there, before they could have faced fines, probation, or even jail time. The bill's author argued that there are no child prostitutes, only victims, because minors can't legally consent. Anyone caught forcing a child into prostitution or soliciting them is still subject to the previous laws. Even some in favor of the rule say California doesn't have enough money to effectively help the children that are detained. But the bill's co-author said California's 2017 budget will have an additional $20 million for social services to address that problem. Indian police beat a hasty retreat under a hail of rocks and petrol bombs. The violence erupted after Friday prayers, plunging the regional capital Srinagar into chaos. The police responded with tear gas and stun grenades. But the protesters were out in force, many chanting anti-India slogans and holding Pakistani flags. And this was Kashmir's southern Pulwama district on Friday, where the arrest of a local separatist leader led to running battles between protesters and police. Kashmir has seen a string of demonstrations in recent months in solidarity with rebels who've been fighting against Indian rule for 30 years. In Iraq, two bombs have exploded in a busy market in central Baghdad, killing at least 27 people and wounding 50. The explosions occurred in Al Sinaq early on Saturday during the morning rush. The Interior Ministry confirmed that a roadside bomb exploded, and as crowds gathered, a suicide bomber detonated his device. Despite reports of fresh clashes after the ceasefire went into effect, the Russian UN ambassador told the press this session that the ceasefire is holding adequately. The Russians had called this last-minute Security Council session to seek endorsement from the 15-member body uh, for the ceasefire that Russia had brokered with Turkey. Meanwhile, a car has driven into a crowd near a metro station in Helsinki in Finland. As many as seven people are believed to have been injured, at least three people were taken to hospital in a critical condition, that's according to the local media. Eyewitnesses say that the driver seemed to have lost control and drove around 300 metres on the pavement before ploughing into the people. Well, several other vehicles were involved in the accident. Helsinki police say that at the moment nothing suggests that this act was intentional. The driver is believed to be uninjured and has been taken into custody for questioning. 
all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass, and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people, and so long as men die, Liberty will never perish. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate. The unloved and the unnatural. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, The kingdom of God is within man. Not one man, nor a group of men. But in all men. In you. You, the people, have the power. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. unite! And in time of domestic crisis, men of goodwill and generosity should be able to unite regardless of party or politics.